All right, everybody, we're going to start talking about consumer behavior. Now, we only have to do the first part of Chapter 6, so this is going to go up through page 125. We're going to start talking about the law of diminishing marginal utility, and we've talked about this in a lot of differences, but we're basically dealing with the idea of satisfaction that we get when we consume. Remember that utility and usefulness are not the same. There are plenty of things that are not useful, but still give us a lot of utility or satisfaction. It's subjective, meaning we might very well disagree on how much utility we gain from a particular thing, and it can be difficult to quantify. Things like happiness or satisfaction just don't lend themselves to being quantified all that well. So the util, which is such a dumb word, is oftentimes used as the unit of measure. You can pay attention to that, you don't really have to. I'll usually talk about satisfaction or happiness, but then once we get into the real business part of this, then we're going to talk about revenue. Okay, so um, mathematically, this is going to look like uh, marginal utility equals the change in total utility divided by the change in quantity. Generally, often, the change in quantity is 1, which means we have something, some number over 1, so it can be tempting to think only about this part of the equation, that marginal utility equals the change in total utility. But remember, if you have a denominator of, say, 2, then that's going to look different. So just always be thinking about it. Don't get lulled into a false sense of security because so many examples have the change in quantity of 1. So um, the downward sloping demand curve is partially the, explained by the law of diminishing marginal utility. Basically, you enjoy the additional thing less than you enjoyed the initial thing. So the first donut you eat gives you more satisfaction than the second donut, which gives you more than the third. Here we can look at that graphically. So we're going to talk about tacos instead of donuts. As you change, you go from, uh, from zero tacos to one, and then from one taco to two. You can see that you go from zero total utility or satisfaction. You go from zero to ten. Then when you eat the second taco, you get eight more, right? So eight is your marginal. But when you add 8 to 10, you get 18, okay? Then when you add 6, you get 24, okay? So what we see is total utility tends to rise as you eat more. Marginal utility as you eat more tends to fall. So don't worry about the direction of the arrows. Just notice that the numbers are getting bigger here. But of course, as we'll notice when we graph it, they do peak out, and eventually you can even get yourself down to zero. So you could basically eat so many tacos that all of the happiness that you gained by eating tacos is erased because you now feel so terrible that you've eaten so many tacos. Okay, uh, And then likewise, your marginal utility goes down to zero. When your marginal utility is zero... Um, oh, sorry. When your marginal utility is zero, that's when you're going to be at your peak of total utility, and then you'll notice in this example that it actually becomes negative, okay? So in our theory of consumer behavior, we're going to once again remind you that we assume rational behavior, that we have preferences, that there are budget uh, budgets that we live within, and that price is used as our medium of uh, exchange. So mathematically, what we want to do is allocate our income so that the last dollar spent on each product yields the same amount of marginal utility. Remember, we don't actually like things the same if their prices are different. So, um, you know, if we stick to, to our apples and oranges, probably all of us have some preference for apples. Maybe apples give us five points of utility and oranges give us ten points of utility. Now, if apples cost one dollar and oranges cost five dollars, then even though we prefer apples, I'm sorry, these so these were apples and these were oranges. Even though we prefer oranges, they give us ten. We're actually going to buy apples because our marginal utility per dollar is greater. There we go. Marginal utility per dollar equals 2 on the orange side, and it's 5 on the apple side. So they are not equal in this example. What that means is I want to 
I'm going to eat an apple because I get more marginal utility per dollar. But what I want to do is equalize these. So I'm going to keep on buying apples until I have lowered my marginal utility per dollar to being equal with an orange. Then I'm going to buy an orange. I'm always going to buy apples when there's more marginal utility per dollar. Now let's look at this in a more uh, specific example. So we've got apples and oranges. Our apples cost $1 and our oranges cost $2. That's incredibly important to remember because we don't just like apples and oranges. We like apples and oranges at particular prices. Okay, so let's say the marginal utility we gain from our first apple is 10. And since our price is 1, our marginal utility per dollar is 10 for the first apple. The second example, or the second apple rather, because of the law of diminishing marginal utility, doesn't give us the same amount. It only gives us 8. So you'll notice that our marginal utility is falling, just like we saw before, and our marginal utility per dollar is falling, just like we would expect, because we're dividing by the same number, the constant price. Notice there isn't a column here for total utility. So total utility would look something like 10, 18, uh, 25, 31, etc. So sometimes you could be given in a problem the total utility, and then you'd have to subtract in order to get your marginal utility. Okay, so you would have to work out that math. A lot of guys will make a mistake by doing total utility per dollar. You don't want that, you want marginal utility per dollar. So then on over here, notice we're getting quite a bit more marginal utility from our first orange than we are from our first apple, okay? But that doesn't mean that we'll necessarily buy tons and tons of apples, right? We get more marginal utility from our fifth apple than our first orange. The difference though is we will pay a higher price for oranges. So what are we going to do? First of all, let's, I just wanted to, to clean things off. So now we're going to start all over, okay? Our marginal utility per dollar, which is what we're trying to figure out. If you've got 10 bucks and you're going to spend it only on apples and oranges, then the first thing you're going to buy is the thing that gives you the most marginal utility per dollar, meaning we're going to buy an orange. Now we don't have $10 anymore. We had to spend two to get our first orange. So we had eight bucks left over. Okay, now we're going to go with our next best alternative. So now we have 10 here and 10 here. Can we afford both of them? Three bucks and we've got eight. So yes, we can afford both. We will buy our second orange and our first apple. Now we go to nine. So we have nine uh, marginal utility per dollar. Nothing over here. So now we're subtracting another two dollars. So we've, we've spent six dollars on apples. I'm sorry, $6 on oranges and $1 on apples, meaning we have $3 left. So now let's see, 8 and 8, so we spend another $2, we're down to 1, we have $1 left. So at this point we have spent $10 and we have purchased 4 oranges and 2 apples. And notice that the marginal utility per dollar of apples equals 8 and the marginal utility per dollar of oranges equals 8. So it's going to look like this, 8 over 1 equals 8 over 1. Okay, Marge, we've equalized this. Okay, so we have, once they're equal, then we know that we've made a good decision. Okay, so moving on, you can kind of see it walk through here. So if you were a little bit clear, you can either rewind and listen to it again, or you can read through this chart. Obviously, it's also in the textbook. So what we're going to see now is our quantity demanded for oranges. And this is our downward sloping demand curve. Okay, so when the price of oranges falls, we're going to demand a greater quantity. And we know that because of the law of demand. So we're just kind of talking about, again, we're rationalizing the downsloping demand curve per the law of diminishing marginal utility. But nothing new there. We already knew that the, down, that the demand curve sloped down. Now let's talk about two effects, the income effect and the substitution effect. So the income effect happens when there's a price change because when prices go down, 
that changes our real income. It makes us feel wealthier. If we feel wealthier, then we buy more stuff. We buy more both of the original thing and more of other stuff, just because we have more money to go around. The substitution effect is similar. So this says, though, that when the price of something goes down, its relative expensiveness changes. Okay, so I did both of these examples in when price goes down, but it both works in the opposite direction when price goes up. So when something is cheaper, it is now even more cheap by comparison to something else whose price didn't change. So we're going to buy more of it because our marginal utility per dollar has actually risen. Okay, so if you were at a marginal utility per dollar of, say, 10 over 2, then that gives you a marginal utility per dollar of 5. Well, if the price goes down to 1, then your marginal utility per dollar went up to 10. And remember, when that number gets bigger, you have to buy more in order to equalize to something else. So remember, let's say there's, uh, let's say there is another thing that gives you, say, 30 marginal utility points, but it costs three dollars. So, or no, let's say it costs six dollars. There, yeah, that's a better example. So that costs six bucks. Before we were equal here, okay? So we bought this thing and we got a marginal utility of five. We bought this thing and we got a marginal utility of five. So now we're balanced. Now we're equal. But if the price goes down to $1, now I have to buy more of this because this 10 is going to have to go all the way, it's going to have to push all the way down to 5 to get me to the point now where I'm equal again with this thing over here and its marginal utility of 5. It's a little confusing. We'll go through some more in class. We'll go through plenty of practice problems. But I want you to think about that. And then also you can pay a little bit more attention to the text. So that's all we're going to do now for this chapter.